I'm pleased to welcome back to the Shilling Show Pastor Carl Gallops. He's a talk show host in his own right, author of the book The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. We're talking today about where is God in the midst of all of these tragedies. And Pastor Carl Gallops, welcome back to the Shilling Show, and thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, Rob, it's always my honor to be with you. And uh, by the way, <laughs> you nailed it there when you were talking about that moment of silence. I always cringe when I hear that or when I hear somebody saying, you know, we'll be thinking about you. Mm -hmm. You know, no, no, I'd rather that you pray. It was, you know? it was let's certain. pray. What's wrong with saying let's pray? <laughs> and, and I don't understand, and, and maybe this gets back to our society because, you know, we used to pray. We used to pray in schools, and then it went to a moment of silence. We used to have leaders calling for National Day of Prayer. I didn't hear the president or anybody else saying, you know, Here's how we solve the problem. It's going back to God and getting on our knees. Instead, we're looking in every place other than the obvious place to solve this issue. Yeah. Well, you know, Rob, you, you and I know this, and I, I'm certain that most of your listeners know this. If we can just get the rest of our culture to understand it, that uh, our problem here in America is not guns. It's not, uh, you know, we need more education more programs uh our problem is what you just said we we need to turn our hearts back to god we need to repent we need to pray and and rob look i, I i've written to this a lot i've I, it's in my book it's it's in a blog i wrote the other day i I've, I've screamed it in radio interviews here's the deal rob and you know this um we can, you cannot take a culture like america's founded on judeo-christian principle and for, oh, Judeo-Christian principles, excuse me. And then about, oh, about a hundred years ago, make a, make a left turn mm -hmm. in the culture and then take eight or nine or ten decades and teach little children. To me, this is the most severe form of child abuse. Teach little children that there is no God mm. and that they came from monkeys. You know, I mean, truly, they came from an explosion, an accidental mm -hmm. explosion, where rocks eventually turned into into living cells, and from there, uh, a common ancestor of a monkey. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no purpose in life. There's no eternal accountability. Uh, you're nothing more than a souped-up monkey, and you cannot do that, Rob, for eight or nine or ten generations or, or decades. Excuse me, mm -hmm. several generations of people without reaping the consequences that we are now reaping. I, you couldn't have an abortion holocaust in our nation if we, as a nation, had a respect for life and the giver of life. You, you couldn't have the redefining of marriage that we now have and the radical homosexual movement without uh, doing away with the creator of sexuality and the creator of marriage and home and family. You understand this, Rob. This this is the problem. I mean, you've nailed it. We need to repent. We need to pray. We need to turn back to our roots. Otherwise, our culture is going to continue to suffer this rot. We're talking with Pastor Carl Gallops. 977-1070 is the phone number. Agree, disagree, have questions, comments, or challenges, Ellie is standing by at 977-1070. We'd love to hear from you. You can also visit Carl online at carlgallops.com. Now, we're going to go to the break a little early because I want to have some uninterrupted time to talk about the question, where is God? Where is your God? Often said in a very mocking tone from people, but I think it deserves a serious answer, and we'll get to that with Pastor Carl Gallops here on The Shilling Show right after the talking with uh, Pastor Carl Gallops online at carlgallops.com about where is God in the midst of tragedy, and I think a lot of people take delight in mocking God uh, because they acknowledge him in a way, but they don't understand him in saying, well, where is your God in times of tragedy? Yeah. Rob, yeah, first of all, thank you, of course, for having me on your show, and thank you for laying that out. That's a, that's a passionate topic of mine um, to which I um, uh, enjoy speaking. Uh, first of all, it, it depends upon, you know, kind of who's asking the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there, there are those who are just dyed-in-the-wool, uh, you know, atheist and, and uh, antagonist of, of the faith who, you know, where is your God now? Well, I, I find it interesting, these people who claim not to believe in God, all of a sudden, um, when something bad happens, they believe in him, and, and he's the culprit. So, mm -hmm. right. so the 
hypocrisy of that kind of nullifies their uh, their uh, participation. But but the large majority of people, even believers, even people who 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 believe it, in God, and even those who claim to be Christians, uh, even those who know the Word of God, in times like this, it I mean, you know, the people are in shock. You know, the nation's mm-hmm. in shock, and and so the question comes up sometimes <clears throat> in a. Uh, Excuse me. Sometimes in a in a very uh, sincere form, uh, you know, wh- where is God in this? Where where is God? Why did He not stop this? Uh, and and the answer to that, and and I don't want to just give little uh, trite, clicheish religious answers. This is this is the truth. I mean, if we're going to ask the question, where is God? We're we're talking about the God of the Bible, so it's only fair that we go to the Word of God mm-hmm. to see what God says about that. How does God answer that question? Yes. And, 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 and the general message of the Word of God in times like this is this. Where is God now? He's where he's always been. He is on his throne. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. God has never wrung his hands and said, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Or, oh, my gosh, what do I do now? Uh, God has never considered anything. He he is the all-knowing one. Um, uh, So where is he now? He's where he's always been. The, The question is, where are you now? You know, where are we now mm-hmm. with God? Uh, tragedies, uh, 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 horrific um, uh, crime has been a part of man's existence from the beginning because of man's turning against God. I mean, uh, the Word of God opens with the understanding of the predicament we're in. But here's the good news of the gospel, Rob. Again, you know this, and your listeners know this. The good news of the message of God's Word is that's why God has stepped into this. By his son, Jesus Christ. He's, he's, he's fixing this. He's going to fix this. His, the word of God ends with the promise that, behold, I will make everything new. There will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more crying, no more death. All things will be made new. But only those who belong to God through a relationship with Jesus Christ will partake in this uh, this uh, reconciled and settled uh, recreation that is coming. In the meantime, you know, in the meantime, it's times like this that should, that should draw us nearer to God, that should point out to us, look how much we need God. Look how sick we are as a culture. Look how, how desperately wicked this world is becoming. Uh, and, and, and by the way, it's the Word of God that tells us, Rob, that these things would mark, these kinds of things would mark um, uh, not only uh, as we drew closer to the uh, to the return of the Lord, but would just mark the characteristic nature of man himself. Carl Gallup's this is you know this took place in a school, and of course, kids across the country are talking about this. My own children are homeschooled for a number of reasons. Um, safety is one of them, but also because we don't want them being divorced from God through the government schools. But how do we talk to kids about this? Quite frankly, I have not told my kids about this, and I don't plan to do it because I don't think I need to burden them with it. But for kids that are exposed to it, how do we bring this down to a level that they can understand? Yeah. Well, I I think you're wise, and I don't know the age of your children, and I will certainly not second-guess your parenting. It sounds like you're a tremendous parent, and, and I agree with you. Uh, especially the little kids. I don't. If, if they don't need to know about this, uh, then then I don't. You know, then, then we need to guard them from as much of this as possible. Yeah. But you're right. For those who do know, uh, how do we talk with them? I think. You know, my humble opinion, I mean, I come from a biblical worldview. Rob, I, I measure everything through the Word of God unapologetically. So in my biblical worldview opinion, we talk with them honestly. We talk with them biblically. We talk with them along the lines of what I just said to your question, where is your God now? We explain the truth of God's Word, the truth of man's nature, the promises of, of God's Word, what is to come, the fact that we are held eternally accountable. Uh, uh, the fact that there is a heaven, there is a hell. Um, if the word of God is is correct, and of course I believe it is, uh, and I believe it's literally correct, uh, then the young man that uh, uh, pulled off this devastation of life, uh, he woke up in the next few seconds uh, <laughs> separated from God forever. And I take no delight in saying that. It breaks my heart yes. because there's absolutely eternally nothing that can be done for him at this point. And people people need to know that. Children need to know it. Families need to know it. Our culture needs to needs needs a. De- we desperately need a return to the truth, Rob. Uh, the the more we try to fluff it up, 
with, well, I'll be thinking about you, or mm-hmm. let's have a moment of silence, or I know what, let's have more gun control. Uh, as, as long as we continue to try to fluff it up and turn away from what the real issue is, our culture will continue to rot. There's something else I want to talk to you about because I think this is important, and people are scared to ask the question themselves, Pastor Carl. Um, is it okay to be angry with God? And if so, what is the appropriate way to do that? Because I'd imagine there are a lot of people, particularly in the immediate families, who might be experiencing anger at God over what yeah. happened. Yeah. Well, as as you know, uh, anger is just one of the in, inevitable stages of grief. It seems to be common to to mankind. So uh, everyone will go through um, some some stage of, of anger, and particularly those closest to it. You know, I've, just, I've been in the ministry a long time, and prior to being in the ministry, I was in law enforcement for 10 years in the state of Florida. I've seen a lot of death, a lot of devastation, a lot of destruction, and I've seen a lot of anger that follows in the wake of it. And uh, so, so you ask the question, is it okay to be angry at God? Well, well. It, in, in, a, in, a, in a very biblical sense, yes, God does not mind us. Uh, well, he knows that we're going to hurt. He knows how we are made. He knows that we are but dust. Uh, he knows how frail we are. He knows our sin nature. He knows our weaknesses. And like a loving parent, when your children are, quote, angry with you, Rob, about something, I mean, you don't throw them out the door. You don't throw them away. You, you let them work through that. You assist them in working through that. You put your arms around them. Uh, you gently chastise them back into line when they need to be. Uh, you gently love them back into line when that's appropriate. So in that sense, for the sincere person who is just hurting to the core and has to deal with that anger, uh, no, God does not mind that. He, In fact, he delights when we come to him. Uh, even in our hurts, even in our anger, and seek his face and seek the truth of his word and seek healing, uh, he's there to offer it. That's my short answer. I could preach on that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a few minutes left with Pastor Carl Gallops, and there was something else that I noticed in the editorial that you'd posted on this, and that is the anemic church, as you put it, and churches yeah. that are not willing to preach the truth. And I fear that we have a lot of those, maybe even the majority of them in America today. Yeah. Well, Rob, you know, the context of that statement was that I had gone through this diatribe in my article about, good gracious, folks, our culture is rotting, and how can you expect it not to when, when you tell our children uh, for almost 100 years, again, that, they can't, that they're a souped-up monkey? And then I said, but now, lest I seem to be placing all the blame on evolution teaching, and by the way, that's, that's 95% of the blame, in mm-hmm. my opinion. It's, it's the most godless philosophy to come to humanity since the beginning of time, and, and the whole world is buying into it. Uh, but, but then I went on to say, but look, a lot of the fault, at least in, the, in America's culture, lies with an anemic church. I mean, I'm going to use a, a culturally, a cultural modern term, a wimp, wimpified yes. pastors that, that won't proclaim the kinds of things you and I are talking about. They, they won't engage in, the, in, in politics. I mean, pastors are convinced, and they've convinced the people sitting in the pews, that politics and, and, and faith need to be divorced. Well, but, but Rob, what is politics but life? I mean, no. politics is life. Politics is the application of principles and laws and reasoning to life. And, and for those of us that come from a biblical worldview, we understand Jesus said we're to be the salt and the light. We're to engage the culture. We're to affect and change the culture. We're to bring, shine light into the darkness. We're to sprinkle salt on, on, a, on, a, on a culture that's rotting and try to preserve it. Uh, so, so you've got a church in America that has been convinced through, through s- several processes over several decades uh, that um, we need just to stand in the pulpit and quote, and I'm going to say it in a, in a, in a corny way because mm-hmm. this is how it's uh, characterized, um, quote, we need to preach the love of Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. end quote. Yes. And, and just, you know, pat you on the head, preacher. You just stay behind your stained glass and preach love and fluff. And uh, you just stay out of the political arena. Well, Rob, because so many pastors and churches have stayed out of the political arena, look what we have for a culture now. We've got one minute left to wrap this up. And I want to ask you, is it too late for America? And if not, 
how do we change things? Yeah, well, the, the biblical answer is I don't think it's ever too late for mm-hmm. any culture that's willing to repent or any individual. I mean, there are individuals listening right now that can repent and come to God. Our culture can repent and come to God. You know, but the, but the other part is, is where are we on this timeline of biblical events? I mean, we may ve- be very close to the, to the return of the Lord. The bottom line, the balance I give it is I live every day attempting to affect this culture to engage this culture with the truth of God's Word, uh, as, as if there is a chance for us to turn around. On the other hand, yeah, I leave the ultimate, reality, the ultimate finality of this in, in the hands of God. Amen. Pastor-